Hi, my name's William, and I built a, a combat robot. And I'm going to call my friend and see if she wants to fight me with her battle bot. Hey, uh, Will. Will. I'm here today with my friend Zoe to test and battle and compare our combat robots. Well, mine's a combat robot, but hers is a battle bot. Weighing in at? 249 pounds. Okay, well, pumpkin bot weighs in at about 25 pounds, with most of that being the pumpkin. Um, but yours is not pumpkin based. What's it made out of? Titanium, uh, fancy steel. Okay, shouldn't be too bad. So, to test the robots, we're going to have three competitions a race, a weapon assessment, and a battle to the death. Watch out, Will. I think I think I have a pretty good chance of winning. I like the uh, blue tape. That's uh, very that's artistry. No, it's it's good. It's really good. Battery's in. And now we're gonna race. We gotta go through the build before we can do the competition. Okay, nice and safe where I left you last. What came first, the robot or the pumpkin? We had to find a pumpkin to fit, no, we had to find, we need to build the robot to fit the pumpkin we pick, not find a pumpkin to fit the robot we built. We're gonna cut the bottom off, hollow it out, and then build a robot to fit on the inside and wear the pumpkin as a hat. And it's gonna spin the pumpkin as its main weapon. Combat fruit robotics. Is a pumpkin a fruit? Is... Oh my gosh, I'm not the only one. The following are technically fruit. Pumpkins! I have showed <laughs> I have shown pretty much none of the CAD design, the uh, computer-aided design design in the previous videos. So here I'll show you kind of where I am about halfway through designing it. The idea is there's a wooden frame on the inside of the pumpkin. It, there's two wheels, a little gear motor, and some what'll be laser cut gears to drive uh, the robot. And it's, this is symmetrical, so there's two more wheels on this side that you can't see. Now to spin the pumpkin, I need a drill motor, um, and that spins this top part of the robot. The way that works is it's like a lazy Susan. There's ball bearings or <laughs> glass marbles, because they were cheap, that are kind of held in place uh, by a plastic ring that has a bunch of um, holes in it. Then the marbles roll around on the top of the robot and the underside of the hat. The limiting factor, I hope, is the pumpkin being not perfectly balanced. So let's go ahead and take apart the drill motor. Everything I've read online, says you need to hit this thing with a hammer if it's stuck. I, I got the screw out of the chuck. Now it's clamped down to the kitchen table. Success! Cannot believe I have not broken this. Oh no, damn it. This is the actual motor. Then you've got the gearbox and then the clutch. My problem right now is the gearbox is too long. Right, let me just show you really quick. It sticks out the bottom. A decision has been made and that is to uh, remove the top half of the gearbox. I want to get an idea of what the output of this first planetary setup is. And to do that, I'm going to use the last project, the stroboscope. So I've colored one of the gears with a Sharpie. It's kind of hard to tell. Well, we'll see what happens. That is 4,800 RPM. So we're gonna to want to reduce that with a, our own gearbox. Let's test how this laser cut gear meshes with the drill gearbox. Oops, sorry viewer. I think my fingers are on fire. This corner is interfering, so I'm gonna sand it down. And, and I knew I was gonna sand it down, but the effort to fix this on the computer was a little bit more than I was willing to put in. It's not really the right way to do it, but sometimes it is the quickest way to do things. It's really hard to get a good concept of how big the uh, model is in SolidWorks or your CAD software until you actually cut it or print it or whatever. Good news, everyone. I cut the uh, Lazy Susan uh, bearing support. <laughs> Mounting bracket for the motor is 
going to be assembled. And to do that, I'm gonna glue these two laser cut pieces together. I wasn't entirely sure how this was gonna be assembled, so I made these uh, mounting holes a little bit smaller and in case I could uh, drill them out. I've encountered a potential problem. So I got the gear here temporarily, kind of with a peg to hold it in place. So it works well, but the motor stops very abruptly. And what that's gonna do is rip the teeth off of here since the pumpkin is gonna wanna continue spinning this gear. So what we can do is create like a friction clutch where this gear is not like really rigidly bonded to the axle that is spinning the pumpkin. Additionally, like my favorite band, since this motor is only spinning in one direction, um, we can put a large capacitor across the leads and that'll help to smooth out the voltage across the motor. The clutch assembly has been cut. I'm not going to finish showing how I made this clutch because it's not working so well and I'm having issues mounting the uh, gear with the whole spring loadedness and so instead for simplicity and because I have to finish this thing in like a day I'm going to use a, a wooden wheel with an o-ring as the uh, drive and clutch. I'm also removing the four-wheel drive thanks to some advice from a friend, thanks Luke, who suggested just having two wheels in the center and some little outriggers which haven't been modeled will uh, kind of help prevent the teetering that is caused by only having two wheels. In, which is nice because now it, it, it serves as like a locking mechanism as well. Here is the uh, assembly which is going to uh, have an o-ring stretched around it. The three screws uh, press the motor against the wall. And then what keeps the motor from twisting is the uh, shape of its output. The skid pads need to be attached now. This is the bottom of the robot with the skid pads and motors installed. Now we just have to put the top plate on. I haven't really come up with a good way to constrain the pieces of the hat. Um, that's not what I'm working on now, but the hat you'll see in a second. I don't regret the uh, method of construction but a little bit I regret the method of assembly. It was a pain in the butt to uh, get the last piece in. This is the point of no return. First cut is the deepest. I need a snack really quick. I've been working hard. Yogurt, no. Leftovers, eggs. Oh, yeah. I'm freaking out a little. Yeah, a lot right now. Uh, I don't have any of the electronics done, so I pieced together some stuff I had laying around. And I could only find one joystick. I wanted to have like tank steering, so two joysticks that just go up and down. Yeah, so you might not see too much of me because I really gotta get this done. How am I going to mount the electronics? With zip ties. I wish I was joking. I am uh, taking apart the drill controller so that I can control it from the Arduino. And this is the big diode that prevents the motor from generating large voltage spikes and frying the electronics. This project went from zero to jank in about two and a half hours. This is gonna be my remote control. So, it's done. I got it working here at the competition. It's not really a competition, but it is. What kind of remote are you using? That's a Futaba 7C. It's cool. I I, uh, I made I built mine myself. That's not, that's pretty neat. Is, is one of these your antenna? Oh no. What Damn is right. this wire? This is the one that causes that spinning noise. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's going on there, Will? I just you know nothing. Yeah. Go. Oh no! Pumpkin bot went back. Okay, oh wait. No! Pumpkin bot! It's too heavy! Pumpkin bot needs to go on a diet. <laughs> Maybe pumpkin bot is like playing it unpredictable. You know? You, you like think they don't want to just give everything away at the beginning. I mean, he's hiding it from me if that's the case. So, pumpkin bot works 
pretty well without its cover on. Um, so we're going to try and remove some of the weight. I'll, just, I'll go a little bit at a time. It's trying to work well. You've got to actually cut a lot off. She's trying to sabotage my well thought out, precisely I... engineered marvel of technology. Nice work. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. Ah! No, I'm going sideways. No, no. Oh my God, I can't see which way is forward. I'm, I'm going, I got it. Go, pumpkin bot, go. No, no, no way. How did I go back? <laughs> okay, chop. Oh no! Very unsportsmanlike of you to do circles around me. Where's the finish line? Here? No, right here. It is oh, I already passed? Hey, passed it. What? Why did it I, I won? We're gonna give Pumpkin Bot another meat cut. It's like a haircut, but with meat, specifically pumpkin meat. And maybe at this point we can reduce the weight to pretty much nothing but the laser cut car. <laughs> why, Pumpkin Bot? Why? It's less of like full blown Pumpkin Bot and more of to pay pumpkin bot. Now I got two necklaces. I think I actually have more pumpkin on me than <laughs> pumpkin bot. <laughs> Look at this. Come on. Now it's time to test our weapons. No, I want to, let me do it. Thanks, Will. Oops. That's a very uh, generous. Yeah, you're welcome. Don't eat all of it at once. Challenge number two. Challenge number two, weapon effectiveness fruit challenge. Um, I came up with that name myself. Chomp gets to smash pumpkins. Pumpkin Bot felt very, very uncomfortable doing that. So instead, we've gotten Pumpkin Bot a watermelon and giant banana. Okay, so it's Chomp's turn. No, 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 God no. It's uh, a Pumpkin Bot's turn to uh, go first. <laughs> It's too good of a bear. So inertia is keeping it like. No. <laughs> I think it's Chomp's turn. Yes. <laughs> it's now time for the challenge you've been waiting for, the battle. I think Pumpkin Bot is really going to make up some points in this round. What do you think? Anything could happen. Oh yeah, Chomp, you don't stand a chance. <laughs> Are we ready? It's dead. Good. I almost had you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was really close. Sorry, reverse. That's the way you do it. All right, well, good game. I think it's only fair since you destroyed my robot. You should have a piece of it. I'm uh, touched, thank you. Is there anyone you want to shout out to, or yes. sponsors? Yes, yes. Thank you so much to LiDAR Tech for sponsoring Chomp with our LiDAR, of this C. Thank you to Applied Invention. Thank you also to BattleBots, frankly, for uh, letting me make this BattleBot. Awesome, and thank you for letting us make something that you obliterated. It was good. <laughs> you should be thanking me. 
Join us next week when Chomp shows us her ancient family's tradition of roasting pumpkin seeds. What did I learn? Uh, don't build a robot out of wood if you plan on fighting a battle bot. Don't use O-rings to drive a large mass. And don't build your wireless remote the morning of your battle. Uh, now, lots of people have been asking about the laser cut skateboard. Those files should be online right now, if you look in the video description. Also, I'm going to make two of them. Well, I'm gonna build one and cut one and give them away to someone in the comment section who tells me which one they want, the uh, assembled or the unassembled one. So two boards, you pick which version. Um, and in addition, people have been asking about the laser cutter. And at some point in the future, I will do an overview. I'm not gonna tell you when, because I have no idea. I'm not gonna do a full build video because it's too complicated. Um, but yeah, this is the end of the video. Leave a comment, win a skateboard. Bye.